hello hello and welcome to another video so in today's video we are going to talk a little bit about holiday black leave and when i say a little bit i really mean a lot of it okay i'm going to start from the top and go all the way back to when we came back um, I know it's not holiday time, um, so the time that you take holiday block leave, if you're leaving for basic training right now, you this probably, this won't have anything to do with you unless you get recycled so many times that you're there until the end of the year. But I want to make this video while this information is fresh on my mind for those people who are perhaps going away after they graduate this year. Um, yeah, I wanna make this video for you, so sit tight as we get into today. Before we get into today's topic, you know, you know I gotta make my disclaimer, and that is I am by no means, and I really mean no means, telling you that you should go off to the Army, to the military, to the Army in general. I am not saying that. However, I want to give you the real facts, okay? I wanna give you the truth about my experience and I wanna tell you the possibilities about your experience. And I wanna do it without any, like I don't owe the army nothing, okay? And they kinda of owe me something, but I don't owe them nothing. So I can sit here and give you the truth. I don't have any ties to it. No one's paying me for it. I don't, I don't owe nobody nothing, okay? I'm literally making this video because this is information that I wish that I would have known before I left. So the first thing I wanna start off with is I did a video, I think it was like, three weeks ago at this point, saying that I was waiting on my last paycheck. And I know this is not about holiday block leave, but you're gonna see how it kinda is about holiday block leave here in a second. Um, I was saying that I was waiting for my last paycheck. They determined that they didn't wanna give me my last paycheck. They said that they, they don't owe me nothing. They, owe me, they don't owe me a last paycheck, go on about your business, and that's it. Um, the other people, the other girls that I was there with, they left two days after me. Two of the girls left two days after me and they got paid on our regular schedule. But because I left two days before them, the army decides, hey, we ain't gonna pay her. Nah, she owes us money. She owes us money for the holiday block leave. The holiday block leave ended up being $260. And somehow, some way they said, oh, your last check, from, from how much we we're supposed to pay you, your last check, we're gonna say it was only this amount of money. And they decided they weren't gonna pay me the last check. So I said all that to say, the big disclaimer that I always give in front of all of these videos is that you can very well not have a good experience, okay? Like everyone's experience, most people's experience with the services is not a good one. I'm just sitting here being honest and sharing with you guys my experience. And I feel as though I have gotten the worst of all the experiences for a good reason, because I have this platform to sit here and tell you guys, and I don't want to tell you to like scare you and say, don't do it. I want to tell you so that you can be prepared and you can be aware and you don't go into this thing thinking like, oh, this is going to be the best thing for me. This is going to change my life. This is going to be better than my home. And you're running away from what you're doing right now. And you think you're going to run into this and it's going to be good. Boof. I want to keep it real. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's get into the video. All right, so I want to say that even if you just got to basic training, so let's say holiday block leave was December the 16th. Let's say you got to basic training December the 1st. You're still going to leave holiday block leave, okay? Even if you just got, like you just left reception and you just actually headed to basic training, you still have the option to leave. I'm not going to say you're still going to leave because I want you to know that, that it is an option. So you have the option to stay back and to not leave and go through this whole process and then save your leave for another time that they say that you can leave okay um for me personally especially if you have family um like you're married maybe you have kids it was the best i don't know if i would have been able to make it through basic training if i did not have that little block of time to go home and just like reunite with my family however i can attest to the fact that it does take your mind out of the game a bit so if you're the type of person who like you know, once you see your family, once you talk to your family, you're like, oh, I want to stay home. I don't want to do this. And you start rethinking everything. It might put a damper in your plans. You might want to consider staying because I can tell you that a lot of people came back from holiday block leave and they wanted to get out. Um, however, I already knew I was chaptering out once I came home for holiday block leave. So it was kind of like the last little push that I needed to go through. But a lot of people did want to change their mind. And, you know, it took some 
It took some adjusting. It took some acclimating. And then I can't tell you as well, I think I told you guys before, that the um, holiday block season, because they have to schedule so much time for these little like um, buying your tickets and things in, in the little seminars telling you what you can do and what you can't do when you leave, because they have to take time off of all that, those are taken away from your training day. So you have less training, like less, um, yeah, less training, less preparation than people who go during other cycles and it's cold okay and it's, it's cold so it just depends on wherever your training site is just realize that it may very well be freezing where you are and they don't care if you're freezing so i want to say that um like i said it's not mandatory but i would recommend it just so you can kind of like you know break up the monotony of it all okay clear your mind a little bit see your family um, I also want to say if you're a person who you struggle with maybe drugs and things like that in the past and drinking, perhaps you should consider staying. A lot of people were drinking, smoking, all that kind of stuff, and then came back, got themselves chaptered out. Um, and not a good chapter out, like Article 15, because they couldn't keep clean, because they absolutely, they did not let me go to Charlie without drug testing me and waiting for my results to come back. But anyway. The people who stayed behind, they were on a schedule, much like the schedule that we had before. So they had a certain time they had to wake up. Um, they had to go to formation. Of course, they weren't doing training and stuff like that, but they did have to stick to a schedule, a schedule of going to the DFAC and all that kind of stuff. Um, if you want to break from all that, like I said, it would be a good idea for you to go on holiday block leave. Um, they did say though, one of the girls told me that when they stayed behind, it was on Christmas day. They actually got to go to Dave and Buster's and well, they got to go to Dave and Buster's the day before. And then on Christmas day, they were actually adopted by a family. So they got to spend Christmas with a family that wasn't their own, but one that adopted them. And this gives a chance for the drill sergeants and everyone else on the post to spend time with their family. So it's really nice. And it gives you a chance to mix and mingle with people who are not your own. Maybe you don't have relatives. I know one of the girls, she was actually from um, Nepal. So she couldn't, they didn't let her leave to go all the way to Nepal to, to see her family. So she didn't want to use her leave time and go somewhere in the United States when that's not where her family was, okay? So yeah, you don't have to do it. There's options for you to stay there. They're not gonna like kick you off if you don't have anywhere to go, but I want to put that in. So one of the things that they do, just to tell you, they're not going to say, oh, this is the day that you're gonna go home. This is the day that you're gonna see your family. It's not gonna happen like that. They're gonna schedule a day like they schedule every other training days. And one of those days, you're gonna get a chance to go to travel. When you go to travel, you're gonna have the option to pay for your own ticket, or you can get the ticket advanced out of your paycheck. They took that money back on January the 15th, out of our check on January 15th. So I would just recommend taking it out via van advance. I wouldn't recommend paying for it, but if your parent or something like that wants to pay for your ticket, you can do that. And this day, you have to think about the, the base as it has everything that you need. So everything from hospitals, um, dentist, um, groceries, like they have everything that they need on this boat, this post, including a travel agent. So they have their own travel agent. They're able to see like all the tickets, they're able to get the best price. So they say, <laughs> and you just go, they schedule a training day, you wait in line forever and you buy your ticket that way. That's how it happens, okay? Um, so we took a shuttle bus. Well, you had to pay for the shuttle bus first and the shuttle bus was $130 round trip. So it would take you to the airport and then back, um, and then back to the base. You can leave in a POV, personally owned vehicle, and I can't tell you how that process works. All I know is they left first, but they also had to come back to the base first. So if you live in the city or the town, whatever, where your base is, you do have the option for your family to come get you. You don't have to worry about none of this. Um, I put on here, you choose and pay for your flight, and this was an all day thing. So we went there after breakfast, Yep, like we normally went to the events, we went after breakfast and then we stayed there, we ate MREs there. Nope, we had hot days there actually. So they had the food and everything all laid out, but it was an all day event. You were waiting in line all day. Just imagine everybody in your battery having to stand in line and buy a ticket. It's not a very quick process. Um, I already talked about choosing the events. So let's say you are in the process of chaptering out. Like you got heard, you're, you're leaving, okay? People left from like the battery, even though they knew they were chaptering out. If your papers are not done, 
you're still going to be there and you're still going to have to come back. And if you don't come back, you are going to be considered AWOL. I want to put this out there because like I said, when I left, I knew that I was chaptering out, but I still had to come back. And yes, it's very, it's not, it's, it's stupid. It's stupid to have to pay for tickets and go through all this, but that's the way it works. Don't get yourself in trouble. Okay. And don't have to stay there longer because you know, don't have, don't end up in jail, baby. Cause you will end up in jail and you go AWOL. Um, if you are stuck at reception, or let's say you got recycled at reception, um, or you're going to be chaptered out from reception, those people still had to go on holiday block leave and still come back to go through the chapter out process. I just want to say that you do not just get to say, oh, um, they sending me home, I'm going to just stay home, deuce. You don't get to do that. Do not do that. Um, like I said, the money was taken out of our paycheck. The leave was also taken out of paycheck. I explained that to you in the beginning. It ended up being $260 taken out of the paycheck. So if you decide not to take leave, you won't have to pay that leave time back if you chapter out. Let's say you chapter out though. So, so let's say you go through the whole basic training process. You don't have to pay the leave time back. Don't even worry about it. If you know that you're chaptering out, if you chapter out before a certain amount of time, like you're not there to, to acquire those leave days, you won't have to pay that money back and it's $260 because we stay for two weeks. Um, so this is what happened the night before. The night before they called us down and they gave us a chalk number. And I'm like, what is a chalk number? What the heck is this? They give you a chalk number and they send us back upstairs with this chalk number. And they said, they gave us a list of things that we need to pack, that we need to have in our bags. And one of those things was our uniform. Of course, you have to leave in OCPs. You are not leaving out there for being clothes. Don't even think about it, okay? Um, they, one of them was our OCPs, the other one was our like personal hygiene stuff. And then they took these little metal seals and they sealed off our lockers so you wouldn't get to go back in there the rest of the time. So they said, but the lockers didn't actually seal the locker and you could open it. So I was really confused about that. And we were going in our lockers the whole time. So I don't know why, I don't know what the seal was for. I think it, it's supposed to be like a tamper seal, but you could still open the locker. So it was very confusing. Um, I do want to mention that yes, you still do have fire guard. And I thought that was wild that we were like leaving. Everybody was kind of up and excited. You still got fire guard and you'll have fire guard when you come back as well. So when we woke up in the morning, we got into those chalks, those numbers that we had, and we sat outside all day. Okay. They gave us two more meals, which are not quite MREs. They have more like snack foods in them, um, and juices and things like that. And then they gave us two no they gave us one mre and two more meals and they set us outside all day like we were not supposed to go back inside but it was so cold outside i believe it was like 17 degrees or something like that it was freezing that if you would have stayed outside like you wouldn't have went upstairs to use the bathroom you probably would have like frostbite so periodically and they gave us our phones so periodically i would just go upstairs everybody was going upstairs just to get like you know, the feeling back in your fingers and your toes, okay? So you're outside all day. I was in chalk five or six, I believe, and I did not leave Fort Seal until 10 p.m. at night. And there was like 12 chalk. Some people didn't leave till two o'clock in the morning. So it was a long, very long process. Um, and they said that they sent people out in the chalks based on their plane tickets. So some people left, you know, very early in the morning, maybe like six or seven, um, something like that. And then, like I said, there were people who didn't leave till two and 5 a.m. the next day. So when they called people out into these chalks, they sent us into the classroom. And in the classroom, you basically sign your leave papers. So this whole long process was really just uh, the big army's way of saying, this is your permission to leave, okay? Um, make sure that that you come back, that you bring your toe back. I'm signing these leave papers. I'm giving you permission to leave here. Make sure you come back. They made sure we have our COVID card and all this little stuff. They gave you a little envelope that had everything that you need inside of it. And you went through the first process. You showed them all those papers. You signed the paper. Then they set us, they moved us to the next room and they set us down there. We got to watch a movie and I you really just wanted to leave. We got a chance to charge our phones. This um, classroom had cell blockers in it, so you weren't able to use the phone at all. So they didn't care if you had it. Um, and then from there, they took us back to reception. So we walked to reception. And from reception, there was a USO set up in there. You got to pick up a bunch of snacks. Well, when you first got in reception, we came in through the back way, right? And they got us to show us all the same cards again, sign another paper. So it's like 
it's it's very repetitive in saying like, oh, we're gonna make sure this is you coming through here. Like we know who's leaving, we know who's here, so we'll know who's coming back. There's no question about it. So it basically was the same process again, waiting in lines, of course. Um, yeah. And after you went through that line, then you went to the USO, you got to pick up your snacks. And from there, they loaded us onto the bus and we arrived at the airport. Now, once you, we got to the airport, we went to Dallas, Fort Worth. I remember being on that bus and just being so elated to hear no drill sergeants. Like I finally felt like a free person. I felt like I was on parole. I felt like kind of free, but not too free, if you know what I mean. Um, and I remember dozing off and falling asleep and then I woke up and I heard the sound of one of my drill sergeants, like from my platoon. And I said, surely this is a nightmare. So I went back to sleep. No girl, they stopped the bus and a drill sergeant came on rushing us off the bus. I'm like, okay, it ain't my drill sergeant, so I worry about it. No, I went inside and surely, sure enough, it was the drill sergeant from my platoon. There at the airport to haunt me. So you had to stand there at the airport and what they did was they did um, pre-TSA. So they checked all of our bags and stuff like that. Again, laying out there. I mean, you will get your bag checked about three, four times, if I'm honest. Checked all our bags again, went through all our papers, and then you went on your separate ways. So because I flew United, I had to go, and I was at this airport. Um, I was at Dallas-Fort Worth. Um, because I flew United, I had to take a shuttle to another section. So. I did not stay there with my drill sergeant and I was so grateful for that. There was other drill sergeants there, but we were so tired and just ready to eat and sit down that who really cared? So we went to get some Wendy's and we sat down and fell asleep, kind of dozed in and out, played with our phones because we hadn't had our phones in so long and waited there for the next, what, four, five hours till um, it was time for us to leave on our plane. Now, I my plane ride was like 6.30 or something like that in the morning, so I was one of the first people to get on the plane. The people who were with me was, um, but there's some people who didn't leave till like 12. So by the time I got home, there was people still at the airport. So it's just, you know, get as much sleep as you can the night before, because it's not like you don't get to stay in a hotel room or something like that. You're just gonna be sitting and waiting around, you know, and waiting around. and. Honestly, if you want to stay under the radar, I would bring some civilian clothes with me and just take off your OCPs if you want to. If you want to have the whole thank you for your service experience, go for it because you're going to get a lot of it, okay? Uh, a lot of it, especially as you get on the plane and do all that kind of stuff. So, like I said, we flew out and that was it. I didn't have to check in with them or anything like that. I did get sick, so I had to call back. Um, I can tell you that if you get sick while you're on holiday block leave, be prepared to come back sick. They really don't care. Um, I had bronchitis and something like that, and I was instructed to bring the medication back and all that kind of stuff. They didn't care. They didn't care. Okay, I'm just being honest with you. They don't care. So um, just try to rest up. Um, enjoy your family, but definitely try to get a lot of like wellness things in there that you can't necessarily do at basic training. Um, I had no finger, no feelings in my fingers. Um, my battle buddies that were with me, she was like, they, a lot of them didn't have feel, feeling in their fingers, feeling in their toes when they were home because we were exposed to the cold uh, for so long. So that's, yeah, just take care of yourself while you're at home. Do spend time with your family, but like you need to take care of yourself as well. And I will also advise don't spend up all your money, especially if you plan on chaptering out, um, because now you know from my story that you very well might not receive a last paycheck and they don't care. So don't go on Christmas break and like do crazy stuff like spend up all your money. Just don't do it, okay? So going back to the airport, as the days like windled and dwindled down, I mean, to be honest with you, the two weeks did seem like a long time, but the day that it was time for me to go back, I was not at all excited. Uh, my suggestion would be to get the latest plane ticket out of there. Um, yeah, just so you can spend a little, just as much time you can at home. That's all I'm gonna say. So when we came back in, um, we were dropped off at the chapel. And then from the chapel, we went through basically the whole waiting process in reverse. So we sat in um, batteries and we waited until the whole battery from our little group got there. And then a drill sergeant took us back to that battery. And then from that battery, they began to check our bags, make us sign a paper saying we're back. And then they walked us to your end. No, they. we got all in, yeah, we got all there, no, battalion. So we got all in battalions. And then from the battalion, they took you to your assigned batteries, okay? And then from your batteries, each of the drill sergeants, the, the ones that you'll know, 
um, they start checking your bags and things like that. And it's a very long process. You will be out there a long time, but usually the drill sergeant who's staying there overnight, if you come overnight, is tired and ready to just do whatever. Um, they're gonna do a health and wellness um, check and don't get in trouble. Don't go home dyeing your hair. Don't go home, don't bring any tobacco. That, they had a lot of people getting Article 15 for bringing back those e-cigarettes and things like that. Leave all that stuff over there. Don't get yourself in trouble doing none of that. But they checked our bags, they sent us upstairs. Once you got upstairs, the bay was very like that. Like they didn't have, they didn't have a lot of people there. Okay. And yes, you still have to do fire guard. Even if you just got in, you still have to do fire guard. So as people trickled in through the nighttime, I mean, you'll get some kind of good sleep for the next few days. They won't be doing much because some people like they kind of staggered coming in. Some people came from even colder places like Maine and things like that. And there were travel delays, so they can't they can't help the travel delays, right? So they didn't do like any heavy training like that until everyone came back, they didn't resume things. So that is something too that I like to put out there that when you come back, it's gonna be very like a trickle, like very slow moving until everyone comes back. They did not feed us, we did not eat. So if you go come leave from the airport, if you come at a weird time like we did, you the food places probably won't be open for you to eat, but make sure that you eat some food because when we got back there, when I came back at like, I think I came back to the battery at like 9 p.m. The food that was there had been sitting out there, the drill sergeant said, since the morning. So I didn't eat that, okay? Um, so make sure that you eat a good meal because when you might get a next meal, it's probably gonna be, the, it's gonna be the next morning. So just telling you that. So yeah, that's what happened with all of that. The next day, immediately, baby, they woke us up and they said drug test. Okay, so everybody had to do a urinalysis and you should expect that. It's a random, not so random drug test. They tell you that if you, if your urine comes up hot, you gonna find yourself at Charlie 95th. So if you have a flight delay, you're still gonna have to take a urinalysis. So don't think you're gonna be able to try to skate your way out of not doing this. And yes, they're gonna be watching. It's not like a random urinalysis where they say, oh, go in there, like kind of at MEPS when they weren't really watching it, they were just in the bathroom at least at my maps, they're gonna be watching you. So there is that. I hope this video was helpful and just kind of give you, you know, an idea of how it's gonna go. It might be different, you know, based on your battery, based on your training location, but it's a general idea of how it's going to go. You're gonna pay, they're gonna help you pay for all your tickets. You're gonna get to go home, but just know you're not really, you ain't really free. Like I said, you're on parole, okay? They're still very much gonna be there. So much so, I didn't even say this. When I got off the plane, the girl was like, the drill sergeant said, go that way. And I'm like, I just got, like I just got the plane. I, I went sit in the bathroom. I was like, Lord, I, I'm back. We back, we back. They didn't waste no time, okay? They wasted no time, all right? So like I said, as always, if you have a question, ask a question and I'll see you in the next video.